Welcome back, everybody. We're here for the final game of this showcase block, and that is Bloom. Uh, would you like to introduce yourselves? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll go ahead <laughs> again. Yeah, Hi, definitely. I'm Amber from last time. Again, President, Studio Director of Wolverine stuff. It's cool to see you. Yeah, um, and I'm George. I'm the vice president of Wolverine Soft, and I uh, came up with the original pitch for this project and then transitioned to the art director role from there. We're going to just so that we can, uh, yeah, there we go. Awesome. I'm going to make sure that I can hear you guys. Uh, so let's talk a bit about the development of the game. What was your inspirations, uh, Warrior? Uh, maybe go a little bit more in depth into your roles during the game, and yeah, just anything, um, anything that, anything about the development that you want to talk about as we play. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I can probably start that off talking a bit about the inspirations. Um, so kind of my idea for this game really came from trying to fit um, sort of what our team is good at. Um, we have a lot of 2D artists and not a lot of people with 3D experience. And we wanted um, our 2D artists to be able to adapt well to doing a 3D game. So as you'll see here in a second, our enemies are actually um, billboarded 2D sprites that we animated inside of Unity. Um, and we did that so that um, we could um, kind of keep up the same art style that we had done in previous games while transitioning to 3D. And when we were trying to come up with a game that would fit with that, um, first thing that I thought of was playing Doom when I was a kid, playing things like Hexen and Heretic, um, just different uh, old retro FPSs that have um, this sort of style. Um, and then also just the gameplay seemed really simplistic, um, but something that we could expand upon um, throughout development. So that's sort of where the inspiration came from for it. Either of this game feels very much like Doom, or I, I'm more familiar with Dusk because I am... Sure. Yes. I'm, a, I'm still a kid. <laughs> yes, but, uh, D Dusk was definitely an inspiration for this game as well. Um, we sat down uh, several times um, throughout development and played through it. Super cool. Uh, what were some of the, uh, what were some of the uh, highlights and kind of struggles that you came into while uh, developing the game? Sure. Um, some highlights, I, I think, is um, the different uh, player abilities, or, or sorry, excuse me, the, the different um, weapons that we came up with, um, variations on those, the different enemy types. Um, I think the team did a really good job in um, coming up with the, the different enemy types. Um, I, I think we have four or five um, by the end, um, but they all kind of fit together well. Um, and we, I, I think at least, uh, did a good job of mixing them throughout. So uh, I think that was a high point. Um, if I had to say anything that was maybe a struggle for development um, from a personal perspective, um, working on the tune lighting um, for this project and sort of nailing down um, that for the art style to get the 3D to mesh well um, with the 2D assets. Um, but in general, um, for the whole team, probably um, dealing with cuts. I mean, it's a student project, so it happens with everyone. Um, but dealing with cuts and um, trying to maintain the, the vision of the project throughout that. And I think we did a good job um, of that on this project of kind of staying with our original goal while still having to scale back because of how short our development cycle was. Right, definitely. And even with uh, even with big projects, like cuts are kind of a natural yeah. thing. You need to make sure that you can ship the game, you can work on it without uh, burning yourself out. And <laughs> sometimes that's just sometimes things just don't make the uh, don't make it toward the end. That's that's part of the game development process. And honestly, I genuinely did not notice the fact that uh, the that I genuinely didn't notice the fact that there were 2D sprites. Uh, oh, <laughs> so that was that was very cool. Here. Yeah, um, so we we wanted them to blend into the environment as much as possible. Um, so we animated them in 3D space, like the golems kind of like throw their arms forward, even though it's 2D sprites, it looks a little strange. And we wrote our, uh, I had mentioned this before, but I, I wrote a custom tune shader for this um, that uses normal maps on the 2D sprites to give them um, tune lighting, even though they're just 2D. Paper Mario is like the is one of is one game that comes to mind along with the Wind Waker uh, when it comes to sure. this type of art style. Um, so was this also last uh, the last game Desolation Place was a semester long project? Was this also 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, um, Desolation Place and Bloom were developed uh, at the same time alongside each other. Um, oh, yeah. Desolation Place had, yeah, yeah, uh, over the same summer. Um, it was our first time deciding to split the studio in two. We had been talking about doing it for a while, and this was our first attempt at it, um, and it went really good. Um, we actually had two finished products at the end, which, uh, you know, there were at points where we were worried, like, oh, are we actually going to be able to split like this? But it ended up working pretty good. Um, so we were pretty proud of that. I mean, like, this is this is a very different vibe from the first from Desolation Place, and it's still sure, and, but it's still very fun. Sure. Um, if I had to say anything about the vibe of this game, it's probably more reminiscent of most of the other games um, that, or several of the other games that Wolverine Soft has made. Um, the games that we showed last year, um, uh, Dream Willow and Io, I, I think were the titles, um, both had this like cartoony art style. And that was kind of what we were doing as like a direct successor to that art style in 3D this time though. So um, that's sort of why it feels so different from the other one where, because this uh, Desolation Place was branching out, trying something new, and this was kind of continuing with the old. There. Really cool. Like, in that case, people can definitely check out the, uh, I think we still have the showcase, or old showcases yeah. stuff so from this, last yeah. year. So the Student Games Festival, IO, and Dream All are available on YouTube, so you can check them out there. Yep. So this is, even if it's a spiritual successor, a success or something, it's very distinctive. I don't, I don't believe I have seen this specific art style. Come on, there we go. Uh, I guess. Um, next, I guess. Do you guys? Do you all have any plans for the future? For the future of this game's development? Uh, Desolation Place uh, said that they were pretty. They were satisfied, and I want to see if there was any plans for this one too. Yeah, um, so as a studio, I don't believe that we currently have any plans. Um, we, again, with Desolation Place, we had mentioned that um, as a group, we're thinking of maybe remastering or uh, adding on to games in future semesters, but we don't have concrete plans for that right now. Same applies for this. Um, personally, as the person who pitched this and uh, as I worked on Art Director, like I, I really enjoyed this project. So I've thought a bit more about like if we were to expand on that, what we would do. And then um, on my own in my free time, um, I had worked a bit on trying to port over the game to VR just in a very basic sense of like having a staff attached to a motion controller and you can point and shoot and move around. Um, but beyond that, I don't think anyone has worked on further development and there's no concrete plans for it. I would totally play this game in VR. Uh, that would be <laughs> so much fun. Oh my god, yeah. 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 Um, I, I've gotten it to run on the Oculus Quest 2. I think it was too performance heavy just from like we haven't done an optimization pass on it um, for the Quest 1, um, but we got it running on Quest 2. So. I have, and it's even more perfect because I also have Quest 2. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah, I would be 100% down to play test any, uh, to play test it on, uh, on, the, on VR because this looks oh, cool. super fun. I like it a lot. Like here. Jason, do you have any questions yourself? Um, aside, yeah, I don't really have any other too many pressing questions that I do have. So just to Um, do you have any shoutouts to anyone out in the on stream or just anyone in general? Yeah, um, so shout out to Jordan Agiloni. Um, he was our industry mentor. Um, he played through this game every single week, um, gave us feedback on things we can improve on and um, kind of really helped, uh, especially with the level design team, kind of uh, nailing um, what we were doing for different environments. And then also shout out to Nico Williams, um, who had been producer on this project, and Matthew Rader, who had been our design director. So, um, I, I hope that nobody saw that it jumped into that fire right there. Uh, <laughs> that, was, that was intentional, totally intentional. Uh-huh, the whole time. I guess that, with that, 
we will we'll, we'll uh, call the sessions for close. But thank you both so much for coming by and talking with us. Thank you for uh, talking about the development of this game. And we have more Wolverine Soft Studio games coming up. So be excited for that. And thank you all for coming. And thank you all for watching. Thank you so much for having us. Nope. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs>